can add beauty and value to our homes and believe it or not even reduce heating and cooling costs if they're properly placed around your yard. But a sick and unhealthy tree can also be dangerous. In today's Angie's List report, Delmarva Life Sean Stryker tells us what to do if your tree is on its last limb. Over the course of the last uh, two years, we had about 17 uh, trees taken out, all ash trees. A few years ago, homeowner Troy Carpenter noticed the emerald ash borer beetle was killing his trees. You start noticing when the canopies thin out and, you know, eventually they don't have any leaves. So we thought we could treat about half of them that seemed to have um, healthy, somewhat healthy canopies. When the treatments didn't work, Carpenter had no other choice but to have the trees removed. Luckily, we do have a handful of trees that are not ash trees, and so it hasn't, you know, completely made us treeless. Uh, we still do have some shade, and um, but yeah, it's definitely changed the look of things. Angie Hicks, founder of Angie's List, says a new look might be worth it considering what could have happened if the trees fell on their own. Proper tree maintenance is important from a liability standpoint for homeowners. You may not realize, but if you have a tree that falls and damages someone else's property, you're going to be responsible. So you want to take care of them when you see the first need. Experts say trees tend to show signs when something is wrong. There's uh, anything from defoliation, partial to complete defoliation of the tree, um, to discoloration of the foliage, to um, disfiguration of the leaves. Sometimes leaves are curled. Um, that can be signs of uh, certain diseases or, or potential other injuries. As is with most diseases, early detection is key to your tree's survival. What I recommend to extend the life of a tree would be frequent inspections by, by an arborist, somebody who can identify uh, issues that, again, may not be detectable by the untrained eye. If we can catch them earlier enough uh, where they may be treatable, um, then, then obviously that gives us a greater opportunity. And when nothing else can be done and it's time to remove your tree, Angie says there are several things that could affect the cost of your tree removal. A lot of tree removal companies will charge by the foot of a tree. So for example, if it's $15 a foot, a 40-foot tree would cost $600 to remove. But keep in mind that doesn't always include taking the stump out, so be sure to ask about that in particular if that's important to you. If you're trying to save some money by taking the tree down yourself, you might want to rethink that decision. While removing a tree might seem relatively simple, but if it's a tree of any size, it's really a job best left to a professional because they're going to have the proper training, tools, and insurance. You know, the last thing you want to do is drop tree limbs onto your house and cause damage. Angie suggests when looking at removal companies, ask if the quote includes a full yard cleanup or if the debris will be your responsibility to remove. Also, Angie says many professionals offer free on-site estimates. She says you want to be wary of any company that gives an estimate over the phone without first looking at the tree. And before hiring a tree removal service, ask for proof of insurance and licensing. And be sure all details of the project, including services and costs, are outlined in the contract before signing. Well, maybe your trees are just fine, but the rest of your yard could use a little work. Well, Jimmy has more on that. Longer days and warmer temperatures are the perfect combination to get outside and entertain family and friends. But maybe your outdoor living space isn't really as spruced up as you'd like for it to be. Well, you can change that. All it takes is a little bit of work and some creativity. So joining us today to help us get started is do-it-yourself expert designer Daniel Grady Ferris. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I, I, I want to do something outside. I want to I transform my outside space, but the budget's a little bit limited. What can I start with? <laughs> that's a great question and that's one I hear a lot because you know people definitely want to enjoy their outdoor space they want to have a good time with family and friends and they want to do it on a budget so the, we've we've actually some of the easiest and most budget friendly things to do are yeah. things that we did here on this deck number one is cleaning and refinishing your deck gives it a fresh new look great for entertaining all summer long and then adding a pergola or a shaded um, covered area on your deck or in your backyard is a great addition or some planter boxes, you know, super simple projects, budget friendly and uh, easy, easy to do. That's nice. So I, I got to tell you the truth. Summers here on Delmarva can be absolutely brutal. Is it possible to actually create a shaded area that still kind of has some style to it? Exactly. Yeah. And a shade structure adds so much to any space. It adds dimension. It adds height. 
Um, so you're not just creating a shaded zone, but um, that's, that's pretty much what we've done here. This isn't a huge structure, but it does provide shade. Um, and we've got a privacy wall behind it, a wooden lattice privacy wall that we built, um, and a built-in uh, bench. So we've sort of created a whole conversation zone under this, this pergola or shaded area, which is a, a place that's great to sit and chat with friends. So I see you got some greenery there. What does that do for me? <laughs> well, greenery adds so much to any space, whether it's inside or outside, but um, of course you want um, greenery outdoors. This adds warmth and depth and life and color um, and energy to every space. So I got to admit, I really like the, that for sure. I like the lattice work that you got there. Does, does that sort of give me like a little <laughs> privacy too? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the great thing about the wooden lattice privacy walls is it gives you an open and airy sort of feel, but it's also intimate. You know, you're not creating a solid wall that, that looks like a solid wall. <laughs> right, right. Um, so it's breathable, it's, it's open, it's airy. Um, and if you need a little bit more privacy, you could have some vines growing up it or um, something like that. Oh, yeah. So again, adding greenery can, can serve two purposes, so. Okay, so if I had to really tell the truth, I'd have to say one of the first places I'm gonna have to start is my deck. So with that yeah. thought, I'm gonna ask you, are you seeing any color trends right now? You know, I see color trends sort of go in and out, but the great thing is now you have so many options. So, you know, you can keep up with color trends year by year. I always recommend refinishing or resealing your deck once a year. It's going to maintain the beauty of it and, um, and the integrity of it. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you can keep up with those color trends or just upgrade your own personal style. Different people love different colors, so there's a lot out there. I like those lights on the steps as well. Daniel Grady, Ferris right. Stewart yourself, expert and designer, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Some great information for you. Now, if you'd like some more design ideas for your outdoor space, all you have to do is go to WBOC.com and click on our picture at the top of the page. And something else that's gotten a makeover, a show seen on our sister station, Fox 21, the state of Delmarva. So coming up next, the show's hosts, Sean Murphy and Jessica Martinez, join us to talk about what is new. Delmarva Live will be right back. <laughs>